folks, and welcome to another edition of the Mediocre Cover Band Guitar Guy. So today I got a two-parter kind of rant going, uh, just from some things that I'm seeing. A, uh, there seems to be a lot of, lot more COVID going on in the province than uh, we'd previously had uh, during the summer and the fall, and even during the height of COVID-19, we didn't seem to be faring as badly as we are right now. And that kind of sucks, um, you know, with all the knowledge and education and information out there. you think the world would be doing better with it, but it seems to be kind of getting worse. So, uh, and I'm going to go into talking about that. Now, I'm not going to get political or medical or anything like that, but just going into um, talking about, you know, us and gigging and, and just getting that back this past summer. I mean, being able to go out and play. I know with the band I play with, Urban Legends, we've we've been fortunate enough to. Uh, we played last week, and we're playing again next week. And you know, we did a Halloween thingy, and um, since August, we've we've managed to grab at least a gig a weekend a month, roughly. So that's been pretty good for us. Um, but now we're on the the downside of everything again, and rumors are. Yeah, and I know they're just rumors, but rumors are spiraling out of control that, well, we need to close the bars down and all that stuff where people kind of congregate. And uh, for the most part, from what I've seen, it hasn't been too bad and too overcrowded uh, at all. But um, we did have a few scenes that kind of went sideways and some people shit the bed and gathered up too close. But I'm going to talk about the whole dancing thing and the bars and uh, everything talking about set lists because there's been conversation about it and even in our own band that maybe we need to tone down the set lists and uh, play stuff that's less danceable and whatever but you got to be careful with doing that too and this is just my opinion uh, you got to be careful with doing that too because the thing is is that you could end up shooting yourself in the foot if you got somebody there who figures I'm getting married um, in the summer and the vaccine might be here and everybody could be saved and we could be back to some semblance of normalcy uh, and I'm going to have a wedding with dancing and a private event or whatever and they see your band and you're doing all these songs that uh, aren't danceable, they're lists, you know, you can, they're, they're pleasing audibly but not so much to dance to. Um, I guess what I'm saying is you still can't pack your set list full of shit you want to listen to and play. I love to do that, but you still have the obligation to entertain a crowd and keep them kind of happy and keep your arses wiggling in the seats. So keep that in mind when you're um, when you're playing. It's not up to the band to be the COVID cops, if that makes any sense to people. Uh, Haggy is not going to come in and revoke your license to play in a cover band because somebody got up and danced in the middle of a club. It's up to the club and its security, um, and which I think has been going fairly well. I know when we play it, it's been there. If somebody does uh, forget whether they're leaving the bar and walking across the floor and they just do a little whatever, the, usually the staff are to remind them you can't do that. But um, and, and dance floors are pretty well blocked off. so It's not up to the band. We're not COVID cops. Uh, we can't decide what the patrons of the bar are going to do. It's the same thing. We can't go in and say we're not going to play a song. It might start a fight. That doesn't happen, right? So if people are going to do it, they're going to do it anyway. Uh, and it's up to the bar. And it's staff to control that and the police. It, not ours. Not our responsibility. Uh, like I said, Haggy's not going to come in and publicly sham you or something or make you do laps or push-ups or wash dishes. Um, the other thing is I did two stories, two little rants on staying humble. I'm going to add a third one now for gear snobs. And um, it's kind of like I read a thing and it kind of equates to it uh, a little while ago about the whole Christmas thing and telling kids that owning up and saying that you're buying like the expensive iPads and that, you know, Santa makes the toys. He makes the trucks and the cars and the figures and all that stuff and the electronics and the gaming systems and everything else. That's for mom and dad. Well, because you don't want people feeling bad about things. The other end of it is this. Uh, saying shit about what's written on the headstock of your guitar and whatever, that means people who are out working hard who probably don't have the funds to go out and spend $3,000 on a guitar. So if it's got Squire written on it and you got it modified, the shit that sounds good, it is good. That's my theory. 
Yep, obviously the $3,000 guitar, your woods are probably going to be nicer, your finish is going to be nicer, the frets are going to be a little bit more even and smoother, probably not going to cut the shit out of your fingers. But you got to live within your means and play the things that you can afford to play. You can't, can't spend your life paying off gear you can't afford. And if you feel that lugging a $3,000 or $4,000, $5,000 guitar into a club makes you a better player, then on behalf of all of us who don't have $5,000 guitars, I apologize for the fact that you have a small penis um, and, and a really shitty attitude and uh, an air of arrogance. If you do it because you have a lot of guitars and you can afford it and you love that guitar, that's one thing, but to demean somebody's playing ability or their instruments because of what they pay for it doesn't mean anything. And I'm going to drop... A name. I usually try not to do this. I saw Chris Kiersey play down to what was once the Fat Cat down on George Street. It's now the Black Sheep. And uh, he played with his band. They sounded amazing. And of course, you know, he played amazing. The sound, he sounded amazing. He was playing a, a Strat, a Squire Strat. It was a white Strat with a rosewood fretboard. And it was Squire. It's one that he did work on. Uh, it was look, uh, banged up and whatever. But it sounded amazing. It really did. And uh, I'll go back to the story that I, I, I had years ago. I was at work and uh, somewhat of a co-worker came to me and said, I went downtown the weekend, I saw this guy play, everybody's making a big deal out of him. I didn't think he was any good, sure, he was only playing an old squire. It wasn't Chris Kiersey, by the way, I'm not, you know. And uh, it wasn't even a squire, it was a guitar that he'd built himself um, out of parts. It was a parts caster, actually, because I know the guy and I know the guitar. Anyway, it, your ability is not based on what's written up here. It's uh, what comes out of you as a person and your ability and your talent and how much time you have to practice. Some people can sit down and practice four hours a day. Some people can get as much out of an hour as some people because of, there is, we're not all created equally when it comes to talent. There is a lot of practice that needs to go in, in there, but some people just have an aptitude for music. And they have an ability that a lot of us don't. And they can pick up different styles of music and different techniques in an hour for what some of us are spending years of trying to perfect or play or do or, or whatever. And um, God love them. And if you've got four hours, and you put that in, if you put two hours in, if you're at it every night for a few hours and you've got that dedication, then God love you. I mean, you can't take that away from somebody, but that's where it comes from. It doesn't come from whether it's, uh, you know, I, I know a guy, his first guitar was a Strat copy out of the Sears catalog, and he learned how to play very well on that guitar until he upgraded to an actual Fender Telecaster. And um, so get over yourself and thinking that because it doesn't have a certain thing written on your headstock, um, you know, you, the guitar player is no good. You look at uh, Jason Jared Nichols, I think is his name. I don't know his name at all. Crap. His uh, signature guitar is actually an Epiphone Les Paul. And uh, I'm sure it's good enough for him. And uh, always remember in the 80s, Robin Trower played Squire Strats. And it's good enough for him, it's good enough for you, and it's good enough for Nan. So, fuck off with all that. Gotta be a Fender, Gibson, or whatever. Um, so anyway, guys, get out and support some live music again, like I'm saying. We don't know how much longer we're going to have it with the shit show that's going on now. Uh, keep your eye out for live streams. I know, keep an eye out. Don does, Don Brenton does his uh, Saturday Night Cure, sometimes on Saturday night, sometimes on Sunday night. Tune into that. He... Uh, plays a lot of songs and goes for a long time playing uh, and gets nothing out of it. He does this for himself and just for the sheer love of entertaining and for the sheer love of music. Uh, you know, check out Ken Tizzard's Whiskey Wednesdays, Tony Thompson. Uh, check out Tony anyway. He's over to Tolls every uh, Friday and Saturday doing the whole karaoke thing before the bands get on, getting people warmed up and ready for a good time. But he also has a uh, club tea bag, which is cool. Check that out. Um, you know, like I said, get out to your local bars because they, they are local businesses. When they, they say you need to support local industry, bars are local industry too. They uh, purchase things from the NLC, they sell it, they uh, employ people to work there. 
and uh, you know in some cases they they give back to the community and something that I did hear somebody say is that when charity uh, comes looking they hit up the bars first but and and bears always step up for 99 percent of the time so get out and support these local industries get out to your local guitar shops do whatever uh, keep music alive here in Newfoundland folks because we were struggling before COVID-19 and I'm sure as hell we're gonna find it a lot harder rebounding from this and um, my last video I shot was about booking bands for weddings and bands that are looking to be booked for weddings can some people go back and watch that again because um, you're just not getting it. Anyway, folks, that's it for me. Uh, probably be back next week with a Christmas edition. Saucy. All right, see ya.